Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my September favorites, and I have a lot of stuff that I've been really loving this month. I feel like this was a month of discovery for me, and I can't wait to share them with you guys. All right, first up is an eyeliner from Lottie London. This is called the Stamp Liner. I feel like this is such a cool concept. So it's double-sided, and on one side you have the wing stamp. So it's an actual stamp that you stamp on your eye, and it creates a perfect wing. And then on the other side, you've got just a regular eyeliner, so you can fill it in, do your lash line, and finish it up. In my experience, the stamp doesn't come out perfect, but what it does is create a perfect line. I'm gonna try and do it for you guys right now so you can see it in action. This could just totally ruin my makeup because this definitely took some trial and error for me to get it down. My biggest tip with this one is to angle it lower than you think. The first couple of times that I used it, my wing was like pointed straight up, and you really just want it to be an extension of your lower lash line. So definitely make it go out more than up. So I'm just gonna align it with my lower lash line and stamp. You guys see how easy that was? And it's like a whole wing that was just created. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Just align it. Okay, so that one I did a little bit too high. I always do it a little bit too high, but we're just gonna roll with it. And then take the other side and just fill it in and have it meet up with your lash line. I'm telling you guys, this makes doing your wing so easy. So now I have a wing and that literally took 30 seconds. So not perfect, but you can see how easy that was. So this is like my new super speedy winged liner trick. And if you struggle with the wing, You've got to give this a try. And then on the subject of lashes, I've been really loving these Kiss Trio lashes and this Kiss Glue. So again, I'm going to apply some of these just to show you what a difference it makes. Just take a few of these really short ones and fill in some areas. I'm not really a big fan of strip lashes. They're just uncomfortable to me. I don't like wearing them, but these are awesome. I've always really wanted um, eyelash extensions but they're just not practical for me. I don't have, you know, three hours or however long it takes to sit and get them done. I know I wouldn't keep up with them properly and they would just look insane all the time. And number two, a big part of what I do is review makeup and I feel like I couldn't tell you whether or not I really liked the mascara if I had on eyelash extensions. These lashes give you a very similar effect as eyelash extensions, but you can just take them off at night. And I used to wanna wear lashes when I did like a full glam makeup look or if I was going somewhere, but I've found that I actually prefer wearing them when I'm not gonna be wearing much makeup at all, which is the reason I wanted lash extensions because it sort of makes you look put together even if you have no makeup on. A couple of mornings this week, I'm hanging in with my kids and I usually take 10 minutes and like pull myself together a little bit. And in doing that, I did my brows, I did some concealer, and then I put on some of these little lashes. And I feel like it made such a big difference in how awake I look and how confident I felt that day. So if you've been wanting eyelash extensions but can't afford them, don't want to commit to them, whatever the case may be, don't want them to ruin your lashes, I feel like this is a really good alternative. And it does take some practice. The first time you do it, it's not gonna look perfect. It's gonna take you a little bit longer. But the more you do it, the faster it goes. And with these, you can really customize how you like your lashes. Like I like them more focused in the center to open up my eyes than I do like a really flared cat eye, especially since I have a wing going on anyway. So I started out this video with just some cream eyeshadow and mascara, and then I just stamped on the eyeliner, which you saw took no time at all, and then applied some of these lashes. And it looks like I put a ton of effort into my makeup, but I have not. So again, not perfect. There's some sparse areas, but it does give that eyelash extension kind of look. So been loving, loving, loving that this month. All right, next up is something that I've purchased for at-home manicures that is amazing. Whether you do press-ons, paint your nails, whatever the case may be, my biggest complaint with at-home manicures is my cuticles. I have like crazy cuticles, they grow so fast. And that's the reason I like to go get manicures every now and then is so that I can get them under control and just make my manicures look so much better but I hate getting my nails done. Like I do not like going to get my nails done. It's a chore that I have to check off my list. I just sit there and I think about all the things that I could be doing instead. I, I know I'm weird, but I just don't enjoy it. So when I found this solution for an at-home cuticle treatment, I was like never going back. And it's the Sally Hansen Instant Cuticle Remover. So for me, I'm scared to 
pluck my own cuticles or what's the word? Trim my own cuticles. And the way that this works is you apply it to all your cuticles. You wait 15 seconds, 15 to 20 seconds, and then you use a little cuticle pusher. I have the one by Tweezer Man and you push your cuticle down and as you're doing that, it just falls off. Like the excess just falls off and you don't have to trim, you don't have to cut anything. If that freaks you out, you're gonna make yourself bleed or trim it too far, you don't have to with this and it gives that same look of really polished, clean cuticles. I was really skeptical of this. I kind of just expected it to soften my cuticles and then as I pushed them down, just be able to work with them a little bit more. I didn't expect it to actually dissolve the dead parts of my cuticles, which is what it did. And I will not do another manicure without this. So if that's a problem area for you, 10 out of 10 recommend this. All right, next up is something that I should have bought a really long time ago, but I didn't. So I've just been using a regular brush when I get out of the shower. I use detangler, but I've just been using a regular brush, not a wet brush. And I finally started using one and now I'm like, whoops, I should have been using this forever. And it is this Tangle Teaser wet brush. This makes such a big difference for me in my postpartum hair loss. Like so much handfuls of hair were coming out every time I brushed my hair after I got out of the shower and I just chalked it up to postpartum hair loss, which a large majority of it is. But when I started using this instead, I noticed significantly less hair coming out because I'm not breaking it as I'm brushing it. Because as we know, wet hair is way more prone to breaking and damage when you're brushing it and that's the whole reason people use wet brushes. I just hadn't jumped on that train until now and now I'm forever on that train. Who like me were just using your regular hairbrush when you got out of the shower, stop doing that. Use some sort of a wet brush, it doesn't have to be this one. It really helps with the damage that you're doing to your hair and the amount of hair that's breaking off. Between using the Sonia Kashuk detangling spray and a wet brush, so much less hair is coming out when I'm drying my hair out with the towel. It's not this handful of hair anymore. Some hair is still coming out because I still am postpartum, but huge improvement with this brush. Next up is something I've already included in the favorites video, so I'm not gonna talk too much about it, but I wanted to update you guys, and it's the Tanologist Express Tanning Water. I talked about this one a few months ago at this point in a favorites video. It's the self-tanner I have on right now, but the one I shared with you guys was in the shade Medium and this is in the shade Dark. I only left this on for four hours. It says one to four hours. That's what the medium one says as well, but I used to leave the medium one on all night and try and get it as deep as possible. But I was nervous to do that with this one because I didn't want to like turn up orange. So I left it on for four hours. I think I could probably go all night with this one too, but I just think this color is a lot better for me. It's a little bit deeper than the medium one. It's kind of a step up. And I used to use Loving Tan, which I wanna say is $45 per bottle. And this one is like $15, insanely, insanely cheaper. Just as good, just as non-orangey color payoff. And I really like that this one goes on clear, whereas the Loving Tan one has a color guard. So as you're applying the Loving Tan one, it applies like a bronze color but it never looks, at least on me, it always looks splotchy until you wash it off and then you're left with the beautiful tan, but the color guard just looks dirty almost. Whereas this one goes on clear, which is a learning curve. You gotta make sure you cover everywhere because you can't see where you've already done. But like you can leave the house, you can do whatever you want without feeling like, oof, I look like I just self tanned. This, there's no evidence of it. So just wanted to update you guys that I'm still loving this but I have graduated to the shade dark. All right, next up I have like a few kind of lifestyle ones I wanna throw in there. The first is these earrings. These are from Target. I wanna say they were like $7 and they're so trendy, so lightweight. You guys know I'm not like a expensive jewelry person. So I love finding like really trendy, high quality stuff at places like Target. And I just highly recommend these earrings. They're super cute. And like I said, I can't even feel them on right now. The next thing is something that I feel like is so cute for Halloween. If you don't really dress up anymore, I don't personally dress up. My daughter is gonna be Moana, which is gonna be adorable, but I wanna have something like kind of festive. So I found this shirt on Amazon. First of all, the quality of this shirt is amazing. It's super, super soft, but it says basic witch and it's the Starbucks logo. I just thought that was hilarious. It's just like a t-shirt 
that I'm gonna wear with just boyfriend distressed jeans and maybe just like tie it up or tuck it in, something like that. But it's so comfortable. The only thing that I will say is that if you are looking to wear this shirt with like leggings and you have a long torso, I have a long torso, I'm 5'9", so shirts tend to be shorter on me. This one is not like a legging friendly shirt on me personally. If you're shorter, no problem. But I personally didn't want that because I want to be able to wear it with jeans, so I didn't want to be down to my knees. But I thought it was really funny. It's like 15 bucks and super, super high quality feeling. So I will link this down below if you're interested in just like a funny little t-shirt to be able to wear on Halloween when you're giving out candy. All right, and then last but not least, this is so random, but I, when I discovered this, I actually wrote down in my notes where I write down all the stuff that I'm loving that month that I had to share this because I was like, it blew my mind. And I think a lot of you guys are gonna laugh at me because apparently this is common knowledge, but I love roasted broccoli. <laughs> this is so random. I love roasted broccoli. I like to buy fresh broccoli so I can put it in the oven, but the steamed broccoli is so much easier because the ones that you can just steam in a bag, you just throw them in the microwave. You don't have to worry about them going bad because they're in the freezer. I tend to buy more of the bagged freezer broccoli so I always have it on hand. But there's this blog that I love called Budget Bites and they share really affordable recipes and they had this recipe for frozen baked broccoli. And I was like, what? And they baked frozen broccoli. They just used some steak seasoning, put the broccoli in the oven, and it came out like roasted, charred broccoli. And I was like, you can bake frozen broccoli. What? I'm sure most of you know that, but for anyone else that did not and will feel just as excited about that news as me. It's amazing what you get excited about at this point in your life. I just had to share it. On that note, that concludes this video. I hope you guys saw some things that maybe you're interested in trying. Let me know what you've been loving down in the comments below and I will see you guys in the next video.